this is a really, really good point. This uh, player X, uh, Schliefke or Semenyuk. They want to hit uh, every ball just into the three meters. This world that we live with, uh, Instagram, TikTok. When I was young, I just wanted to spike. I didn't care about anything else. The practice should be organized and planned. And, uh, I would be all for this kind of work. Followed some uh, volleyball star Changed the scoring for the drill. Ten years ago, they start to be the videos of uh, Engapet. If the players are tired, then the practice should be faster. To be good at something, to be better at something. To push yourself to do things that you never did before. Boys, they always like to attack, hit the ball. They were too small or too slow or... It's, it's an incredible sport. It's, uh... I am here with uh, Mark uh, Lebedev and... Uh... Our volley coach podcast uh, should be about motivation of the players. So why should uh, players come to the practice? Uh, because Mark is uh, very active on uh, internet. He has his own website at home uh, on the court. And he wrote uh, there in one post that make the players want to come to practice and your job, job is done 98%. So I would like to speak about this uh, topic of the motivation of the players. And uh, could you please uh, tell us... Uh, Tell me more about uh, what uh, should be the ideal motivation of the player to come to the practice from your perspective and also if you can, uh, from the perspective of the player. The, mostly I speak about the perspective of the coach, but uh, for me, the most important thing is that the player comes to practice because uh, they want to come to practice. So for the coach's perspective, this means that the practice should be organized and planned and uh, some uh, some parts of it are fun, some parts are learning that the the people, uh, the players at whatever age, uh, they feel good when they come to practice. They look forward uh, to those sessions. From the point of view of the players, uh, the, especially for young players, they should come to the practice first with the idea to learn to be good at something, to be better at something. This is a, a really big motivation, uh, and I think that the players have to focus uh, on this part. One other, one really big part is the is the social component. Uh, volleyball is a wonderful team game. Uh, it's the most team game in the world. You can't do anything. Uh, you know from your experience uh, you can't do anything without your teammates and there is more opportunities to interact with with people with your friends to make new friends uh, than in almost any other sport and the to push yourself to do things that you never did before part of learning uh, to become a human being part of developing as a person uh, is to push yourself to do things that you've never done before. So uh, I think these are three really good things that uh, that young players can uh, can think about uh, when they're getting ready for their training. And uh, do you think uh, that uh, as a coach, uh, you can really like persuade player to be motivated to come to your practice, uh, to make the practice uh, fun, to make it uh, uh, interesting for them? Because uh, when I am coaching sometimes the girls, you know, uh, I see on their face that one day they have like a very good uh, interest in the practice and other day, you know, they are a little bit like uh, not sleeping, but maybe tired uh, from the school. So uh, this could be also like a good point uh, for the coach to keep them motivated for every practice. It's a really difficult part of being the coach because as you say, you never know which player is going to arrive. Is it the one that is tired? Is it the one that's excited? Uh, so you have to be able to uh, to make some changes in practice as you, as you go. If the players are tired, then the practice should be faster with less breaks in between. If the players have a good focus, then you can make the drill, make the exercises slower. That is more about learning. And if uh, really nothing goes... Uh, then there are lots of uh, fun games with volleyball over the net kind of uh, games that the the coach can use to uh, to create good atmosphere, to create good social conditions, and then maybe change to one learning drill or uh, one one physical one physical drill after that. 
And I see it also uh, because my son is playing uh, volleyball. He's now 17 years old. And I see that uh, the young players, especially boys, they always like to attack, hit the ball and uh, serve, uh, jump serve. Do you think this this is this can take also part of the motivation for the players? If you say that, okay, this practice will be about defense, so they get, uh, oh, defense, I am not attacking. Uh, do you think that this can also influence their like motivation, the kind of the practice uh, and the skill, what they will do in the practice? Uh, most definitely. Uh, you remember when you were a young player, I'm sure, the things that, that you like to do. When I was young, I just wanted to spike. I didn't care about anything else. So one drill where I can spike 50 balls in a row was for me was perfect. So uh, to find the things that the players like to do, uh, some players, for a lot of players, they like to practice defense because it's really active. They are on the floor. They are doing crazy things. Um, so this kind of uh, this kind of exercise in between other exercises can increase the motivation. And uh, boys especially, they also like to play. So any kind of competition, um, then this they will be motivated to uh, to prove they are the best, to to show themselves, to to beat their friends. So um, these are a couple of good ways to uh, to engage the players. And I think also that uh, one important part, uh, part out of the training is to follow some uh, volleyball stars uh, and uh, to see them, they're attacking, uh, blocking, uh, serving, uh, defending and uh, uh, passing uh, on internet, on uh, Instagram, on TikTok. Uh, do you also think that uh, this is important that the players should follow these stars to see uh, themselves in their body in a few years? This is a really, really good point that uh, one... This, the way that people get engaged and excited about volleyball is uh, from stars, from seeing the local team, from having one player that they follow. And with this type of, uh, with this world that we live with, uh, Instagram, TikTok, uh, we can see all of these, uh, all of, all of these uh, players that, and the, the amazing things that they do. And for this, uh, this is a really wonderful opportunity for players and you know you can see the whatever ten years ago they start to be the videos of uh, Engapet um, doing things that nobody ever d did before. And now I'm sure you go to every 17 year old uh, under 17 gym and they are doing the things that uh, ten years ago nobody ever imagined. So this is how to excite players, but this is also how to grow the game. The, Try to football players try to be Messi or Ronaldo. Um, this is this grows football and and uh, finding the stars and following the stars of volleyball uh, has the same purpose for for us. And uh, even if you are a coach of uh, professional teams and national teams and players who are earning money, do you also prepare for them some kind of like a not motivational video or some uh, special things uh, for them to motivate them uh, maybe even uh, before the important match i can sometimes do that uh, i talk with my players about the things they see on tv the players that they play uh, some of my players are younger ones they never played against uh, these really famous players but uh, so this is a motivation for them and other guys, I can say, you play against this uh, player X, uh, Schliefke or Semenyuk, you know what they do, you can try the same things. And uh, this works for, for every level, for motivation, but also for inspiration and uh, learning about the game. And do you think that also some uh, players are just uh, coming to the practice over-motivated? They, they want to do something uh, too much and you have to calm them down because you know they want to hit uh, every ball just into the three meters and in the game you know it's not possible there are always uh, players like this but for me these are the easy players to to work with because the ones who always want to be trying and pushing and are excited to play it's easy to find a way for them than the ones who are not motivated so uh, sometimes it can be frustrating when Somebody wants to play every ball or spike the three meter line every time, but uh, over time you can uh, you can calm them a little bit. You can uh, change the scoring for the drill that they don't get the point for 
what they want to do, but for a different way. And uh, this this is another way that you can uh, learn about the game. And I also know from my own experience that uh, some players were better than me, more talented or now are talented, but sometimes they go to the practice and they see that, uh, you know, they cannot practice. They don't have to practice at 100%. And on the other hand, there are smaller players or the players which uh, doesn't have uh, so much uh, technical skills, but they are working hard and hard every practice and uh, they want to improve. Uh, do you also believe that uh, these players with the more motivation have bigger chance to ac- to success in the big volleyball? The history of all sports is full of uh, great players who started when they were uh, they were too small or too slow or uh, they didn't get the chance at the beginning and then they have to learn different uh, different tactics. They have to learn to think about the game in a different way. So uh, these guys, these kinds of players, boys and girls, uh, these are ones to look for because they are the ones who will uh, push the game, will find new solutions, will um, be not always, of course, but uh, they can be great players or greater players even than the ones who uh, are big and strong and jump high when they are 15, 16, 17 years old. Uh, I I understand and I agree. And uh, do you also think that uh, the motivation also is uh, related to the state, to the country where you live? Or for example, you were a coach in Poland and you know that in Poland the volleyball is uh, super popular it's more popular than football maybe and on the other hand uh, in some countries there when there is uh, not volleyball like in england you know i can i can say that uh, it's also affecting the motivation of the players to go to the practice to start with volleyball and to become a good player the we talked already about the uh, having heroes in the game and it's if you are living in poland if you are born in poland it's easy to have a, a a hero as a player to the, that inspires you to go to practice to join the local club and uh, in England or Australia then it's difficult to find these heroes you fire you are you are, you come to the game from a teacher or a friend or uh, the social component um, and not the this motivation to be a professional so uh, it's People come to volleyball in different ways. Many come to volleyball to be um, to be professional, uh, but a lot of people they come just because they love the game. It's a wonderful game. It's a game of great social uh, social possibilities. Boys and girls both playing, which is certainly important uh, in some ages. And uh, however people come to volleyball uh, is great. And uh, here in Czech Republic, we have also some uh, not official competitions, but competition where the boys are playing with the girls. Uh, don't you think that it would be also good to have some competition? I don't know how to uh, limit it, how to how to restrict it, but to have competition that boys can play to, uh, together with the girls because it's uh, much more interesting uh, from the social point of uh, uh, social point of this uh, game. Uh, it's been done before that. I mean, on beach volleyball, they play uh, two or three uh, player beach volleyball with uh, with mixed teams. Uh, indoor volleyball is more difficult because of the physical part of it. But uh, they had a league in the United States uh, 50 years ago with uh, women playing only in the backcourt and without rotation. Uh, so uh, it's it's possible if you have some imagination and. Of course, in the artificial tournaments, you can you can do what you want. And uh, don't you think that also a big part of this motivation is uh, taking your height? Because, for example, if I am 180 uh, centimeters and I am grown, I am 25 years old, I could never probably be the national team player or playing in Italy. Uh, don't you think also that uh, there could be some competitions and, uh, for these uh, players uh, under some... Uh, under some uh, height, uh, so that this could also help them to uh, to play more volleyball, and they could uh, even be like uh, world championships uh, for this uh, uh, for this uh, uh, for these competitions. Uh, this could be a, a great idea. The world championships for less than one meter eighty five, for for women less than one meter seventy five, something like this. Um, uh, any opportunity uh, to to play volleyball to 
uh, is is a really good idea and um, you have to be careful then if you have shoes um because i'm 184.7 sometimes <laughs> and 85.1 maybe so uh how you measure these things is important but uh i would be all for this kind of watch and uh the final question is uh, about the uh, imagine that uh fivb world volleyball federation is doing a very good job in my eyes for volleyball there is a volleyball board tv the The events are well organized. There is a lot of public. But imagine that if you could do something uh, and you had uh, unlimited resources, uh, money, people, everything, what would you do to improve volleyball to to grow even more in the future? Oh wow! Uh, I would I would like to take volleyball to places that it's not popular. Uh, in uh, in Italy, in Poland, in uh, in Japan, we we know in Brazil, we know what what we can expect there. I would like to have the the big events in in these places, in in places that volleyball is not popular. And then I don't know how exactly uh, to find a way to to fill these stadiums to get people to come to the games because once people are in the gym, once they see the game once they can be close to the court and see the speed and the power and hear the sound when the ball hits somebody uh when the ball hits their hand um when they have the opportunity to see and feel and hear these things then uh it's easy to convince them to to love volleyball again but you have to get them to come one time and uh so if i have unlimited resources i would put the big tournaments in these places and uh find some way to get uh, people who don't know volleyball to come to the gym. Oh, that's an interesting uh, answer. I'm also thinking that uh, volleyball is uh, pretty popular, but we have still a big gap. Uh, we can be much more popular and uh, we need, uh, you know, many uh, Instagram stars, many YouTubers, many podcasters, uh, many great coaches and players and fans and uh, everybody involved in volleyball because uh, As you said in the beginning, that uh, I also believe that uh, volleyball is the most uh, team sport because you cannot win by yourself uh, on any level. No, I, I agree. It's uh, uh, it's it's an incredible sport. It's uh, it you and me. <laughs> one thing that we share is this sport that gives us uh, so much in our lives, and I would like to to share this with other people that they can have the same. The same chances, the same life, the same opportunities that uh, that this beautiful game gave to gave to me. Okay, so thank you, Mark, uh, for your um, for your answers, for your thoughts and uh, opinions. I hope that uh, our listeners uh, will uh, be at least uh, more little bit more motivated after our podcast, and that uh, more players uh, will play volleyball, and volleyball will get uh, better not only in our eyes but in eyes on um, of many players. Thank you for your time and uh, good luck in the season. My pleasure, and good luck with uh, with this podcast and uh, your club. <laughs>